Okay, so my day started off with browsing the Blue Bird site and its almighty algorithm surfaced this tweet to me. $25 per skin. $25 per skin. $25 United States dollars for each Overwatch skin. You could get Helldivers 2 for less than the price of two of these skins. You could buy so many more whole ass games for less than one of these skins. Don't let nostalgia blind you. Which, to be fair, is a perfectly rational statement to make. Overwatch has crossed over with Cowboy Bebop and are pricing it rather high. But then it gets worse. Someone actually said, meanwhile, you can get three skins for $20 in Fortnite LMFAO. And at that point, I just can't anymore. It's not the own that you think it is to say that you can get three skins for $20, since $20 will get you, for the most part, your choice of any indie game, excellent, self-contained titles that won't nickel and dime you for any more money, games that can provide you with tens if not hundreds of hours of gameplay, some of which get content updates years after launch for free. Shout out to Stadio and Concern Ape by the way. And my god, it's simultaneously depressing and heartbreaking to see comments like this. At the risk of sounding like an old man yelling at the clouds, I do think that something has fundamentally broke with regards to the mentality of people who have been playing free-to-play games for all their life. From the shovelware crap that masquerades as games on the iPad, to the free-to-play games with gems and timers on mobile, and now mainstream free-to-play titles like Fortnite, and honestly, it's not their fault. It's the 20 and 30-somethings making and designing these games, of the 40-something team leads executing the decisions, of the 50-something studio heads making games like this, and of the 60-something executives laughing their way to the bank. I'm not saying that Fortnite is a bad game, rather, on the contrary, it's excellent in terms of gameplay, of the tension that a battle royale mode creates, and the way they do seasonal content is impressive, to the extent of completely overhauling the game and is probably the one true metaverse in its current iteration. To do so, however, it had to be free to play so that they could get that mass audience and given the colourful and cartoony visuals, parents were more likely to allow their kid to play this as compared to the military shooters like Call of Duty. The unfortunate price of that was constantly exposing children in many cases to the constant harassment of microtransactions to spend V-Bucks on skins to the extent that default skin is now an insult in schools. If you are similar to the person that said I can get 3 skins for $20, I would advise taking a step back and looking at your behaviour and patterns in the big picture, since it might have long lasting impact even going into adulthood and when you have things like student loans and mortgages, mindsets like this may just lead to very bad outcomes for you down the line. If you're Gen Z and have somehow escaped the song of the siren, congrats! It's not easy to have to deal with friends in your entire school playing games like this and not want to get involved or rather drawn too deep into meaningless e comparisons on who has the flashier avatar. Coming from a 30-something with a kid, you can think of my mindset as old school in which games, you know, are supposed to be fun or to make you feel something of games that can challenge and stimulate you both in mind and body such as honing your reaction and can be fantastic with friends whether you're working together or playing against each other. In 2024, I found indie games to be that refuge of developers who make reasonably priced products that can give you these very things without constantly asking you for 20 more dollars. So if you want some suggestions, feel free to ask and I don't know, grab a 4 pack of Terraria at 50% discount for just $15, give it to 3 of your friends and have fun with that game.